All right, Pep Nation, like I mentioned, this is a deload week in regards to our speed training. So we wanna give our nervous system a break and allow our body to rest so we don't get hurt. So the first eight exercises we should know like the back of our hand. We're going to start on the ground doing our ground-based mobility torso activation exercises, completing eight reps per movement. These exercises are the cat-cow, plank pike, quad nordics, downward dog to cobra, push-ups, T-spine rotations, and side plank reach over. Now you might be asking yourself, why are we taking a D-low week so early in the program? Well, we've been accumulating a lot of volume during the last three weeks of training. So progressively overloading each and every week, not just in the weight room, but during our speed sessions. But what I love about deloading is that we get a chance to take a step back and really focus on form and technique as we relax, unwind, and give our body that much needed recovery so we can come back next week firing on all cylinders and running faster than we ever have before. So once finished on the ground, we're gonna stand up and we're gonna complete six dynamic skip series exercises going 20 yards in length. This will only take a few minutes and you will start with a forward skip, forward arm circles, followed immediately by backwards skip, backwards arms open and close, which both focus on opening up that chest and shoulder region. Next is our side skip and reach, going both ways, making sure to stay long and tall throughout the skip, followed by a lunge that focuses on opening up that hip region while coming back with a backwards skip, focusing on glute activation with each and every step. Finishing with our leg swing series, forward and side to side to increase both hip fluidity and hamstring mobility. So now we're gonna jump back to the ground and finish with some mobility activation exercises, completing eight repetitions per movement. The first exercise is a tactical frog stretch, which I definitely feel the added mobility in my hips, along with the seated wall hip flexor stretch, which really opens up the hip flexor and quadricep. Then we do our prone scorpion, which stretches that low back region, followed by the iron cross. Then we get back onto all fours and perform a straight arm plank hip circle without rotating or swiveling our hips side to side. And finishing with the cross body leg whip, which targets those IT bands in hip region. All right, so this week, when doing our sprint mechanic drills, really focus on upright posture and a good, strong, rigid core throughout each drill. We have six drills in total. So stay 100% focused on each and every drill. If you wanna take your game to the next level, you have to stay committed and do this properly. The first drill is an A skip, working on staying long and tall without breaking at the hips or rounding at the back with big arms driving from the shoulder, developing rhythm and timing with each foot strike. Next is a double A skip. What you really wanna focus on is not rotating side to side. Stay strong in the core, maintaining correct posture and mechanics throughout the duration of the drill. Then we work on A switches. Really think about pulling that bottom leg up using the hip flexor, which drives that top leg down with force. Also pause for a half second to work on body control with each switch. Followed by A runs, which we're looking for smooth, quick ground contact with great arm action. Then we jump right into the butt kicks, making sure to not lift the knees too high while closing the gap behind the knee, working on quick backside heel recovery, but also important to maintain dorsiflexion in that foot. Lastly, we finish with scissor bounds, making sure to claw the ground back underneath you pulling yourself forward dynamically with those hamstrings. Then we roll straight into two times 20 yard, 70% acceleration strides, working on staying low and getting full extension with each run. Once finished our sprint mechanic drills, we're gonna go right into our hurdle mobility exercises. We only have two exercises today to complete, so really focus on form and the intent of each exercise. The first being our lateral dynamic A skip. This drill increases hip drive and mobility along with coordination and rhythm, which is critical for athletic development. We rarely do any lateral movements on our speed days. So it's good from time to time to add in some lateral movements to help activate different muscle groups to prevent overuse injuries and imbalances. The next drill is our hurdle walkover, two over, one back, which is very challenging because you spend more time within the hurdles 
meaning your hips are going to get more work than usual, forcing you to maintain great posture, due in large part because your hips will burn going back and forth. This is great to train all those small intrinsic muscles that need work to stabilize you during sprinting. Thus, you need to get stronger in order to do these. Complete two rounds of each drill and then move on to your heavy sled walks. So the heavy sled walks this week are still done with 80 to 100% of our body weight. But we want this week to feel a bit more natural and smooth as we work down the turf. Really think about getting big arm action this week as this creates big hip and leg extension with each step. Also emphasize fully pushing away and finishing through the big toe with each step to maximize glute and quad activation. This week, we're also going to pair the sled walks with skips for distance after each set for 20 yards in length. Using this as a contrast method to reiterate getting full extension and driving down into the ground, maximizing each push, as this will help develop explosive power and speed to become that game-changing athlete. All right, Pep Nation, so we just finished all our dynamic mobility, all our hurdle drills, and our sled work inside the gym. Now we're outside, and we're gonna be working on the grass today, especially that it's a deload week. We've been spending the last few weeks on the grass, because it's a little bit easier on the joints, and it allows our body to kind of absorb load, so we're not putting too much pounding throughout this first phase of our training. So today's workout was two sets of six runs. So these runs were nice and easy. They are about between 50 to 75%. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because it's our D load, we're working on form and technique, and we're especially on that cadence and that foot strike, making sure that we're long and tall and we have good posture with each and every step. So we want to bring that knee up, make sure that we're long and tall, drive that foot back down underneath us, and make sure that we're really rhythmic with those arms and we get full extension, really open up each in every step. So once we finish our runs, now we jump back inside for our core training. Hey, what's up, Pep Nation? This next series is our plank suspension exercises. And I really like this because it really works that deep transmissor abdominals and making sure that our core is strong and stable throughout all our exercises, including sprinting. So Chad's gonna jump in here and there's four different exercises within this full series. It's gonna take you about a minute. Now, what we wanna make sure of, we wanna make sure our shoulders, hey, hips, knees, and ankles are all in line. We squeeze the glutes, everything's locked and loaded. And now the first one, he's just gonna go up and down alternating with those arms. Now, he doesn't wanna go too far, putting too much stress on his core. He goes out just um, as, as far as he can before his hips break. Now, we don't wanna go side to side with those hips either. Everything's gonna be up and down, locked and loaded. The next one is just gonna be uh, out to the side, so open and close. Again, don't go too far, especially because you don't wanna put too much stress on those pecs. You wanna make sure those glutes are on, he thinks rib cage to pelvis. The last one, he's gonna go clockwise and counterclockwise circle. So he's got 10 uh, and then 10 the opposite way. We're doing 10 reps of every single exercise here. So he doesn't want to go too far and let those hips dip. He wants to keep those hips in line with the shoulders throughout the entire workout. So he's nice and loaded, nice and strong. And so this exercise is going to really complement all of his sprinting exercises and all of his exercises when he's in the weight room. Okay, two sets, three sets, but just make sure you get 10 reps of everything. Here we go. Baby.